I don't know who needs to hear this, but I just want to say and start this episode with your sin does not define you. Your sin as an individual, your sin that you've experienced in your marriage Mm -hmm. no longer defines you. If you are in Christ, you are a new creation. Mm -hmm. The challenge is, is that we oftentimes forget Mm -hmm. what it means to walk in that reality. Mm -hmm. So we're here today to go through a passage of uh, 1 Corinthians in chapter 6. We're going to remind you of this this new life that you've been given Mm -hmm. and how you can walk in that actively in your marriage for the good of your union unto the glory of God. And so we will see you on the other side. Well, if you're new to the show, my name is Ryan. This is my lovely wife, Selena. And we are the authors, the voices, the founders, now the faces, better or worse, <laughs> of Fierce Marriage, of Fierce Families, which is our online uh, YouTube presence. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we have two podcasts. We have the Fierce Marriage Podcast, which is what you're watching or listening to right now. We also have the Fierce Parenting Podcast. Our whole life is dedicated currently and for the foreseeable future to commissioning families, commissioning marriages uh, for the gospel, yeah. reminding you who Christ is and all the wonderful weight that he bears Mm. on our daily family lives. So thank you for joining us. Welcome to the show. If you would like to participate, the Mm -hmm. easiest way to do that is to leave a comment. If you're watching this, if you're listening to this, leave a rating, leave a review, leave a question, wherever you decide to to write in. Mm -hmm. We get those questions. We love those questions. They help us realize how we can help you. So do that and go ahead and leave that five star rating. Right, that's Selena's favorite number is five. Five stars. When it comes to stars. Yep. Subscribe, rate, review, do all the all the good things. Yeah, and the way and one of the main we, uh, ways that we are supported as a family is through our our supporters. Uh, that's a terrible way of articulating that, but it's through our partners, our ministry partners, couples like you who think this is valuable work and want yeah. to see it continue. By God's grace, he's allowed that to happen. If you want to be a part of that, go to fiercemarriage.com slash partner. There's some options there. You get some free stuff, but that's not why you do it. Mm-mm. You do it because <laughs> you're awesome. That's why. That's why you do it. Because he's awesome. Yes. He is awesome in you. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Okay. So we're, we're trying to address kind of this the idea of sin, past sin, mm-hmm. shame, regret, and the implications and the results that it bears in our everyday marital lives, mm-hmm. right? So, Selena, we get a lot of people writing in through social media, and what is this is in response to that because we're we're trying to figure out a way to. Well, yeah, I mean, it all looks different. Uh, oftentimes, people are writing in about a breach of trust, whether it's been infidelity mm-hmm. or uh, finding out about an addiction. Uh, to pornography there's also you know we're just distant and i don't know why which typically leads to uh, leads you to sin right there's usually some sort of underlying sin that they're dealing with Um, and so the fact that you're coming to a youtube video to try to find out like what do i do about sin in my marriage and how do i i I feel already because sin breaks us it takes us further than we want to go it costs us more than we want to pay and it leads to death and jesus is very clear about that and so if we are sitting in darkness and death and we do not know where we're supposed to go and then how we're supposed to bring another person into this and Mm. somehow reconcile and move forward uh the good news is that you don't have to do it by yourself uh the good news is that A lot of it, I would say all of it, (laughs) I would argue that all of it has been done for you uh, through the blood of Christ. Uh, But there is some work on our part, right, that God has has given Mm -hmm. us uh, to do. And so we want to walk through 1 Corinthians 6, uh, verse 11, and hopefully give you more of a picture Mm -hmm. of what it means to uh, deal with your sin uh, and to see yourself, I think, rightly, because sometimes we don't see our sin rightly. We see it as like, oh, it's just something I, you know, it's a bad thing I do every once in a while, or Mm. I'm just kind of caught in this bad habit. Well, uh, sin is is more than a bad habit, I would say, so. Yeah, so it's helpful to think of this in maybe terms of past, present, and future. Mm -hmm. And the the verb, or the the words that you're gonna see in this scripture from Paul uh, are gonna kind of correlate with past, present, and future, and the three kind of goals that we have for today. It's A, to be honest with you, Mm -hmm. like Selena said, and then to deal with it and then to be free of it, yeah. okay? So past, be honest with what happened, mm-hmm. and, be, and at present, deal with it here and now, that's yeah. good, that's right, that's the, the the only way to really find health, and in the future, be free of it. Yeah. Don't let it, don't let it bear its weight on you. So I'm gonna read actually a few verses sooner than that. I'm gonna start in 1 Corinthians 6, starting in verse nine, and uh, it says, or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, 
nor idolaters, mm. nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom mm. of God. And here's verse 11. And such were some of you. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Mm. So you see this pivot, right? Paul is saying he's 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 calling them by their former identities. Mm-hmm. And he's saying, he's reminding them, do you not know right. that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? And he goes through this litany of things. And here's the thing about that list is, I don't care who you are. Like you'll find yourself on that list yeah. somewhere. Yeah. And and so it leaves us all hopeless. It, there's a bit of a, until the, the gospel is infused well, into it. Well, and the first part of verse 11, and such were some of you. I think your your response and your, your default response to that is very telling to how you view Mm. your sin because if i say you know if i read that and such were some of you well i don't i don't do some of these things i'm not that well well, well, back up selena right like i am a sinner saved by grace so Mm. therefore i have and i i have fallen into sin and i can't he says do not be deceived verse nine like do not be deceived this is who you are so he's he's bringing the truth of reality of who Mm. we are not who we think we are because of whatever good works we might have done, but who we actually are, Mm. uh, which is very important to understand our identity uh, as a sinner in order to understand our identity in Christ. Mm. That's so good. That's so good. Don't be deceived, right? Mm. Let's let's see these things rightly. And that's what Paul is helping us with. So I want to focus in on these three words. Yeah. And uh, you were washed, okay? Mm. And such were some of you, but you were washed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that first word washed, let's talk about it. So it's, there there was a, a dirt, there was a, a uncleanliness mm-hmm. on the li- on these Corinthians' lives, yeah. on our lives, but that cl- that dirtiness has been removed, mm-hmm. right? We we have, he has washed us white as snow, right? And so that deals with our past sin. That there's nothing that's not been rinsed away, washed away, made clean right. by Christ. And I want us to just stop for a second and understand that just because it's washed away, right? It doesn't mean that. Uh, we're just ignoring it, forgetting it, brushing it under the carpet, not dealing with it, right? And so mm. the washing is a spiritual washing of the sin that is within us and mm. usually leads to repentance, right? And leads to uh, making those decisions to live out uh, the gospel every day. And so mm. uh, the washing, I don't want to misinterpret uh, what is actually happening there. Well, that's good. Yeah, we deal with it. That's why the present, the next piece is there. It says you were washed. Okay. Mm-hmm. So the past is in the past and it's been removed from you. Your the indictments right. have been lifted. Mm-hmm. Now you are sanctified. Okay. What is sanctification? It is mm-hmm. you're now being made righteous. Right. So you've been washed, you're clean. Now here's the deal is it's already but not yet. Okay. We're yeah. not perfect just because we've been saved. Any Christian will tell you that. Like mm-hmm. we still struggle with sin. We still we still war with our flesh. Yeah. Now we're being sanctified. What does that mean? That from the inside the, the sins are being rooted out and yeah. cleaned out uh, and they are being turned into righteousness. Mm. So the Greek verb there for to be made righteous is the same word that you would use to actually call something yeah. righteous. Um, it's it's a slightly different variation of the word. The point is, is that you're being turned into something that is righteous mm. in the flesh. Okay, that's the second piece and that, that correlates to uh, the present and we'll, mm-hmm. we'll talk to how do we deal with sin in the present. We'll get in more detail later. And the final one is the one that just really gets me. It's that you are justified. Mm. So that has to do with our future. So if one day, someday we are going to stand before God, Mm -hmm. before the mighty throne. And we will, if we're in Christ, Mm. we will either be justified Mm -hmm. or we will not be justified. And here Paul is saying, you are now justified. Now, the Greek word underneath that, I love it. I feel like the word for justified, we get... We get the sense of what it means. Yeah, there's a lot of connotation around but, it. Though, but we don't really understand what the what the word means unless we hear kind of the context. We hear what Paul is getting at, which I love it because <laughs> what that literally means is to be pronounced righteous. Mm. That you will stand before the throne of God and you will be judged. And on that judgment day, mm. you will be pronounced righteous. Mm. Right. So that what is that if not liberation, freedom from the, the chains and the bondage of our sin mm-hmm. from the hold that it has it used to have over our lives. And so we'll talk through uh, just in a, in a few minutes what it means to deal with or to be free of it in the future, to, to be free of our sin moving forward. So um, so let's talk through these more granularly. Okay. I thought we were doing that. That's why I went into that. Sorry. No, no. So, okay. So <laughs> we can go being back. washed, yeah. we're being sanctified, we're being justified. Yep. Okay. That was the overview. 
no matter what Selena thought. <laughs> and <laughs> Maybe that was my mistake. <laughs> uh, that was the overview. So how do you be honest with your sin now? How can yeah. we be honest with our sin here and now? Uh, again, I think it comes from rightly understanding who we are as sinners mm-hmm. uh, saved by grace. And so when we understand that we are sinners and that we're going to produce sin, right? Uh, and the only way that we can not sin is by believing in the gospel and walking that out uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit and the grace of God. And so we need to view sin rightly. Again, Mm -hmm. it's not just a bad habit. It's not just something we fall into accidentally because we just can't exercise self-control. Sin is a a part of our humanity. It's in our fiber. Uh, It's how we, it's, it's innate. And so what do we do with that sin? I mean, the Bible tells us that in James 5, 16, to confess your sins to one another and to pray for one another that you may be mm. healed. Uh, the prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. The confession part, the repentance part, is it always seems scary, and it, and it should, I think, until you grab a hold of, mm. of remembering that my identity is in Christ, not in what my spouse thinks of me, even though I feel like that, I want my spouse to think well of me. Like naturally we want them to love and accept and value us, but there's going to be moments where that's going to be really hard because of our sin. And Mm -hmm. so how do we view our sin and how do we take that view and remember that Christ is the one who frees us. And so if we're living out of that freedom, Mm -hmm. then how do I pivot and deal with my sin in a humble way? Yes, I've been washed. I've been washed white as snow. Yes, I have freedom now. But if I'm going to my spouse or my husband and saying like, hey, I'm free of this sin that I've been dealing with and like, I'm sorry if it hurts you, but God has freed me. I mean, that's just going to leave him in a wake of, of pain and hurt and distrust. And so mm. we have to deal gently with each other. And that's part of being honest right. about the effects of our sin. Mm-hmm. I just, I, I, I want to harp on that point a little bit, just a tiny bit more that we need to view our sin rightly. Mm-hmm. And I, I think oftentimes we don't see our sin for what it is because we don't see God for who he is. Yeah. That when our sin is, it, it's it's utter rebellion and rejection of God. Yeah. It's utter rebellion and rejection of all that he has called good and right and holy and true. Yeah. And we are actively rebelling from him, turning from him and choosing a functional mm-hmm. God that we would p- put in his place. Mm-hmm. And that realization makes us hate our sin. Yeah. It makes us grieve our sin. It makes us see it for what it is. We're honest about it. Yeah. So when and we've had many times in our own marriage where we've had sins that we've had to disclose to one another and it's usually met with fear, like mm-hmm. not not met by, I, I'm fearful the bringing it to her. The person confessing is dealing with fear. Yeah, fear that, oh, she's not going to, she's going to be mad at me. She's going to hold it against she's me. She's going to be hurt. Or I'm just going to feel something I don't want to feel, usually shame or guilt. Uh, or yeah, or she's going to be hurt, like you said. And when you see sin the way God sees sin, all that stuff pales in comparison mm-hmm. when you realize that that sin needs to be rooted out so that you might honor God, love God, turn from it truly. Mm-hmm. And being honest with our sin, like you said, confessing to one another, part of being honest is realizing that we are not called, we're explicitly not called to just deal with our sin by ourselves mm-hmm. and and go on with life. Right. We are called to get it out in the open, to confess to one another, to confess it to God mm-hmm. because there's power in that. Yeah. And that's being honest with your sin. Husband, if you're struggling with some sort of pornography addiction, be honest with yourself. You can't get through it alone. Mm-hmm. It is an affront to your God. It is an affront to your wife. It is an affront to your marriage. Mm-hmm. Okay, Be honest with yourself about that. If you're hiding anything, you're, yeah. you're, you're lying to your spouse. You're, you're, you are not living within the one flesh union that you are called to live within yeah. if you're hiding things. So be honest about that. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, number two. Now, how do we deal with it? Yeah. Okay, so we're not going to leave you there. <laughs> how do we deal with our sin? And this is the process that Paul calls of sanctification, right. right? So what do we do in the present, right? What do we do when, okay, I'm, I'm honest with it. Now I need to step into this. Okay, so it's the confession of sin, which we've right. touched on. Right. But I love, so there's there's the Westminster Shorter Catechism, number 87, and it talks about repentance, mm. but specifically repentance unto life. And so the question part of it is this, what is repentance unto life? And the answer is repentance unto life is a saving grace, whereby a sinner, that's mm. us, yeah, whereby a sinner out of a true sense of his sin, okay, so we've been honest about it, and an ap- apprehension of the mercy of God in Christ does, so the sinner does, with grief and hatred of his sin, turn from it unto God with full purpose of and endeavor after new obedience. Mm. So it's this repenting of it, rooting it out, turning from it with, with with grief and with hatred toward your sin so that we can now 
live and walk in new obedience. Now, here's the, the trick. How do we do that? How do we walk in obedience? <laughs> do we do it alone? The power of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> we cannot do it alone. And I have this, I, I have a quote from John Owen that um, I think says it perfectly, so I'm just going to read it. Okay. John Owen, this is his book. It's called The Mortification of Sin. Um, it's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> classic. It says, I have proved that it is the Spirit alone that can mortify sin. He has promised to do it, and all other means without him are empty and vain. How shall he then mortify sin that hath not the Spirit? So he's asking, how can someone without the Holy Spirit mortify the sin in his life? And the answer says, a man may easier see without eyes or speak without a tongue than truly mortify one sin without the Spirit. Mm. Now, how has he attained? It is the Spirit of Christ. And as the Apostle says, he's talking about Paul. Paul says, if we have not the Spirit of Christ, we are none of his. Mm. That's in Romans 8, 9. So... He goes on, if we are Christ, we have an interest in him, we have the spirit, and so alone we now have the power for our mortification of that sin. This the apostle uh, discourses at large. Romans 8, 8, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So Mm -hmm. if we're trying to kill our sin on our own, on our own, in our flesh, without trusting God. We will fail. (laughs) We will fail. We will fail. And magnificently. Yeah. And so... How do we deal with our sin in the present? The first step is we repent, we turn. Yeah. Now, notice, we're turning away mm-hmm. from our sin, but we're turning to life, the someone. Promise, yeah. We're turning to God. Remember, repentance unto life is a turning away from that sin unto God, saying, God, help me with the sin and dwell me with your spirit. Root this out with me. Sanctify me. And I think a good indicator of whether or not, whether or not we're trying to do it on our own is... Uh, the level of grief, I think, mm. and hatred that we either have or don't have towards our sin. Yeah. I think it's a, just a good indicator of where our heart's at. Like if I'm kind of okay with the sin and I just, you know, I should probably repent and we'll deal with it, but I don't um, actually see it honestly and truthfully, then I would wager to think that you are not actually understanding the weight of your sin and are not probably in a great place to present it to your spouse um mm. but also i think that our spouse is a good uh at least for ryan i think sometimes i can be i think emotionally cold or i can let things roll off my back really easily and not feel deeply about them so sometimes i can bring sin to him and he will be super hurt by it and i'm like well i was just coming to say sorry and like okay like so he shows me my my own lack right my own need for the holy spirit to work in my life my own need to see my sin rightly and that is part of the sanctification process and i'm so grateful Mm. not maybe in the moment it doesn't feel great but i'm grateful that my husband can see things rightly sometimes when i cannot like you said yeah having that kind of hatred for our sin and here's the thing if you're feeling like you don't really care about Mm. your sin that's the first step God, help me in my apathy. Mm. Help me to see this the way you want me to see it. I can't see it unless you reveal it to me. What I need to do about this and what Mm. I need to feel about this rejection of of your law, rejection of your character. So dealing with it in the present, again, starts with um, repenting, turning, turning unto God, asking for his help, being honest with your spouse. That's a huge, huge step that can be very difficult depending on what you're doing to kind of root out this sin. But Mm. remember, This is the path to freedom. You're not just doing it to go through it and be done with it. No, it's a path to greater life. Mm. It's a path toward freedom in your marriage. Mm -hmm. We have a whole book on it called See Through Marriage. Check it out. (laughs) There's a ton of detail on what that process might look like for you. Uh, And then the final one. Actually, no, let's read uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 7.10. It says, For godly grief produces a repentance that leads Mm. to salvation without regret, whereas worldly grief produces death. Mm. Remember, we're not faking the shame and guilt mm-hmm. it needs to come from from the holy spirit from Absolutely. within that's what regeneration looks like yeah. that's what repentance that's where it starts yeah it's a death that's where the death to self mm. i think really comes into play i love it okay so past present now future mm. which this is the justification piece yes. remember that just that that greek word right to yeah. be pronounced. called to be pronounced yeah. holy Mm-hmm. Hagias, that's the holiness, right? Uh, to be pronounced holy before God, that is our hope, right? And so we are walking in light of that current that current pronouncement that right. will withstand into eternity. And that is where we start to find true freedom out of this. Right. So what could that look like moving forward? Okay, so you're saying, I am now washed. I'm being sanctified. We've talked. We're, we're, we both are acknowledging yeah. that our sin no longer defines 
us as individuals. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to define our marriage. We are dealing with this stuff in light of the fact that it doesn't have to define us. We're walking with the Spirit, walking right. toward de- Christ together. Yeah, I think dealing with it too means, right, we're not holding it over. We're not just waiting to pounce the second that the mm-hmm. sin or temptation is even there, right? If we're mm-hmm. being transparent with each other and saying that I'm struggling with this sin, we're not just ready to police our spouse, right? That's not loving. Mm. But we can only do that if we have a true sense of our justification. Right, right. Because when we have a true sense of our justification, yes, our hope is sure, our hope mm-hmm. is secure, but then we also realize that we are only saved yeah. because of the the loving call of Christ and the, the intervention that mm-hmm. he continually is doing before the father saying he yeah. that that one is mine mm. he is mine she is mine he's with me mm-hmm. she's with me and so that justification says that i cannot in any way hold any sort of moral high ground yes deal with yeah. the hurts like no one's saying don't deal with the hurts don't right. deal with maybe whatever systems led to the bre- the breach of trust whatever systems led to sin deal with that but do it from a place of my God has loved me unconditionally and he's not held and he will not hold my mm-hmm. sin against me. How can I possibly hold my sin against mm-hmm. my spouse? And the answer is I can't hold it against them in a moral way. It doesn't mean that we automatically have trust. We automatically right. have complete right. healing. It just means that I can't stand here from a moral high ground and say, yeah. you horrible person. Right. Um, Are you going to share a clip by Alistair Begg? This clip is unbelievable. So, um, yeah, we're just going to play this clip by Alistair Begg. It, it paints this picture perfectly, and then we will close out the episode after that. So here's Alistair Begg. If you were to die tonight and, and, and you were getting entry into heaven, what would you say? If you answer that, and if I answer it in the first person, we've immediately gone wrong. Because I... Because I believed, because I have faith, because I am this, because I am continuing. Loved ones, the only proper answer is in the third person, because he, because he. Think about the thief on the cross. And what an immense, I can't, I, I can't wait to find that fellow one day to ask him, how did that shake out for you? Because you were, you were, you were, you were cussing the guy out with your friend. You've never been in a Bible study. You never got baptized. You, ne- you didn't know a thing about church membership. And, and, yet, and yet, you made it. You made it. How did you make it? That's what the angel must have said. You know, like, what are you doing here? Well, I don't know. What, what do you mean you don't know? Well, because like, I don't know. Well, you know, we, uh, uh, did you, Excuse me, let me get my supervisor. They go get the supervisor range. So we have just a few questions for you. First of all, are you are you are you are you clear on the doctrine of justification by faith? <laughs> the guy said, I never heard of it in my life. And and what about let's just go to the doctrine of scripture immediately. This guy's just staring. And eventually in frustration, he says, On on what basis are you here? And he said. The man on the middle cross said, I can come. (laughs) Now, now, that's the, that is the only answer. That is the only answer. The man on the middle cross said I could come. Mm. That's it. Your sin has no hold over you. It Mm. has no power over that day, nor should it have power over this day. Mm -hmm. So, believer, Loved one, Mm. walk in freedom, walk free of your sin, and may your marriage be blessed because of it. Mm -hmm. Let's pray this out. Lord, I thank you um, for this truth that we are washed and we are being sanctified and we are justified and our sin is no longer our identity, but we are your loved one and we are called and we are justified because you made it so. Lord, I pray for the couples listening to this and they are feeling maybe afraid, maybe hopeful, maybe mired in their sin and disappointment and hopelessness. Lord, I pray that you would draw them out of it, that this wouldn't be an encouragement to them, that they would walk in the new life that you've given to them and that their marriage might flourish and their children would experience the flourishing that you provide and generations on down the line. Lord, by your grace, Jesus, we love you until that day when we meet you. Amen. Amen.
All right, Fierce Friends, this episode of Fierce Marriages is in the can. We'll see you again in about seven days. So until then, stay fierce.